hello guys and welcome to another powerpoint tutorial in this video i'll show you how to create this interactive pros and cons animation in powerpoint let's begin by inserting a rectangle to cover the slide then insert a rounded corner rectangle i'll use these dimensions adjust the corner radius then align the rectangle on the slide. Duplicate the rectangle. Let's merge these rectangles using the Fragments Merge option. So, select this rectangle first. Then select these two rectangles. Head to the Merge Shapes option and click on Fragment. As you can see, we now have a cutout rectangle shape. Let's proceed by inserting text in the rectangles. I'll just paste my text from my clipboard. The fonts used for this presentation are Anson and Bricolage Grotesque. The links are in the description if you'd like to download them. Also, if I enter the paragraph options, you can see that the text is left aligned with indentations before the text. Additionally, there's some spacing between the heading and body text. Alright, let's proceed by inserting text in the other rectangle. Now we can change the colors. Let me just switch to my preferred color theme. It's a good design practice to use the colors on the color theme when designing slides as it saves time when editing and reusing the slides as a template. So, I'll change the fill and outline colors of both rectangles and increase the line weight. Let's improve the visual design of the heading text by switching to a linear gradient fill. Delete this, then customize these three gradient stops by changing their colors and positions. Okay, let's also apply a linear gradient field to this text. By default, PowerPoint applies the last used gradient format style, so we can just change the colors of the gradient stops. Okay, now select the cutout rectangle and apply a linear gradient field. Delete this and change the colors of these two gradient stops. Then remove the outline. Okay, let's create covers for these rectangles. So, duplicate this rectangle, remove the outline and delete the text. For consistency, let's apply the same gradients to this shape. So, select the text, head to the text format options so that PowerPoint recognizes this as the last used gradient format style. Then select the rectangle, head to the shape format options, and select the gradient fill. Then align the rectangles. Let's also design the rectangle by adding text and icons. So, inside a text box and format the text. Align the text box with the rectangle. Let's proceed by inserting an icon. I'll insert my icon from the PowerPoint Creative Library. You can always use external sources for your icons. Change the color of the icon. Then align the icon with the text. Group the text and the icon. Align it with a the rectangle. Then group all the objects together. Duplicate the grouped objects, edit the text, change the icon, let's be consistent with our design by matching the gradients, so switch this to a solid fill, I'll just drag this so we can see the text. Select the text, 
add to the text format options so that PowerPoint recognizes this as the last used gradient format style. Then select the rectangle, add to the shape format options, and select the gradient fill. Then align the rectangles. Open the selection pane, then rename all the objects on the slide for easy navigation. Also, add double exclamation marks before the text so that they morph accordingly. Then move this cutout rectangle so it's in front of all the objects. Okay, now let's apply mouse overs to these objects. So insert two dummy slides, head back to the first slide, select the cutout rectangle, head to the insert tab, then click action, insert the mouse over hyperlink and link it to the first slide. Okay, let's also insert hyperlinks into the rectangle covers. As you can see, the action option is grayed out because you can add actions to grouped objects. There are two ways we can fix this. First, we convert the grouped objects into a single object by converting them to a vector graphic. However, this is not the best option because you won't be able to edit these objects. So, the second way, which I believe to be the best way, is by using an invisible shape. Let me demonstrate. So, copy and paste the rectangle. Let's just change the color. Align it with the rectangle. Then rename the object. Hold Ctrl and Shift, then drag to duplicate and align the rectangle. Then rename the object. Now let's add mouse over hyperlinks to these rectangles and link them to subsequent slides. So link this to slide 2. Then link this rectangle to slide 3. Drag the rectangles behind the cutter rectangle so the cutter rectangle is in front. Select both rectangles, head to the format options and make them invisible by increasing their transparency by 100%. Now select all objects and copy them to the clipboard. Head to the second slide and paste the objects. Then select these two objects and drag them away from the slide to reveal the text. Head to the third slide and paste the objects. Then select these two objects and drag them away from the slide to reveal the text. Finally, select all the slides, apply the morph transition, then reduce the duration. Alright, let's check it out on full screen. As you can see, everything is looking good. Now, to use these slides as a template, we will need to remove the text colors on all slides where the text are hidden. So, on the first slide, select these two objects and remove the text colors. On the second slide, remove the text colors where they are hidden. So, select these objects and remove the text color. Then repeat the same for the final slide. Now, with the help of Morph Transition, these slides can be used as a template and we can edit the text however we like. Let's just check it out on full screen. As you can see, everything works as it should. 
There you go. That's how to create this interactive pros and cons animation in PowerPoint. If you like the tutorial, please support the channel by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing for more PowerPoint awesomeness. If you're interested in the tutorial slides, the links in the description. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.